plan for us. His intended plan for us was to have a beautiful love triangle with him and us and our spouse. That there's something powerful and undeniable that happens when a human feels love for another human and then as a team they translate that love to God. All kidding aside, I recently got a puppy and I noticed how much easier it was for me to be nicer to my kids and easier for me to praise more because I was already in giddy gooey mo mode with this cute little animal. We are created to feel incomplete without someone. It is very painful as a minister to have to say to people, God has someone for you, you just need to wait and you need to pray. And until then, you need to fill your life with the things of God. Because it's one thing to choose to fast and to take that time and use it to get closer to God. But it's another thing to not be able to afford food and have your food stamps run out before the month is over. A mandatory circumstance imposed fast is pure torture for the hungry. Most pastors, most preachers, most ministers, most music ministers are married. very easy to stand on a pulpit and tell single people this is God's plan right now this is how it's supposed to be right now and this is where you're at and what you need to do right now. it's very easy the problem is there's very little justification in scripture to look at single people and tell them this may be God's will for you. In fact, biblically, it seems contrary. And just because Paul said things like, it'd be best if you don't marry, that was not inspired scripture. That was his opinion. Even he said so. But it is the nature of the beast to need companionship. It is the nature of the beast to need family. And what I felt very strong from the Lord, and what I felt very strong from the Lord was... We have to start telling people that these are healthy, normal longings. That this isn't lust. That this isn't sin. That this isn't a shortcoming to want to have this. If you're sick, it is normal to lose your appetite. It's not normal for me to ever lose my appetite. But it's actually happened. And when it happened to me, I thought I was dying. Absolutely thought I was dying. That I 
was eating less. I was like, wow, I've never been so sick that I didn't want to eat. And yet when someone's sick and they don't eat much, when they get start getting better and they get their appetite back, everyone around them says, oh, you got your appetite back. Oh, you're doing much better. That it's a sign of health and wellness to want to eat. In fact, when people are sick and dying, and part of the death process is that they begin to not want to eat anymore, the natural reaction of their loved ones is to force them to eat. Because it's a sign of giving up to not eat. It's a sign of dying to not eat. And I am absolutely, absolutely, I am absolutely comparing that to romantic desire and interest. That it is a sign of giving up when you meet people who are so hurt and so broken by what other people have done to them or what they've done themselves that they are not interested anymore. That's a good way to offend someone, I'm sure. Maybe there are people that really are called by God to be single. God bless them. According to the Bible, they're very blessed. And they can do much good for the Lord. But also the Bible addresses them as unique. It's pronounced eunuch, but it's it means unique. <laughs> there are a lot of people that after a marriage or two seem to lose interest altogether. And I always go, Wow, oh, is that person healthy? Is that person happy? between them and God. All I know is today God told me to say that we look at people who say, oh my gosh, I can't stop thinking about Africa. God's calling me to Africa as heroes. We look at these people like heroes. We look at them like people we need to write a check to, that we need to help them raise money to, to go on their mission. Historically speaking, the church has supported people that have longings for a type of people. But when a person says, no matter what I do, no matter what I accomplish, no matter how much God is close to me, I am never complete. Because I don't have a mate. We look down at that. We look down at that and we see it as a weakness or a sin. Or just an annoying needy person. I remember when a movie called Broadcast News came out. And uh, there was one part where Albert Brooks, who was what we would now call a bear... said, wouldn't it be great if needy was attractive? And I remember, I remember in the theater, knee-jerk reaction going, it is, it is! <laughs> and then realizing that I was the only one in the theater that had made a noise. <laughs> and the person I was with was looking at me and I turned and I went, this is a very moving film, isn't it? <laughs> And she was like, we need to talk. <laughs> so when I got my ring back, <laughs> we do not look at animals that, have, that are stray and lost and abandoned and starving and thirsty and desperate for love as a negative 
we look at the condition that brought them to that point as negative, 